A superhero full of rage and claws that can cut through everything and everyone in a second. If this description reminds you a little of Wolverine, I can see why you're thinking of him. But today, we will talk about Ripclaw. Ripclaw is a superhero from Image Universe. With similar powers like that of Wolverine, Ripclaw might be easily passed off as a Wolverine copy. But that is not true. With powers such as astral projection and psychometry, Ripclaw has his own ways of dealing with things happening around him. And in this video, we will dive deep into Ripclaw, his powers, and what makes him who he is. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Ripclaw, a metahuman with cybernetic enhancements. Ripclaw was born on 1st April 1969 under the name of Robert Beresford. He is a Native American from the Iroquois Nation. This is in Northeast America. As a child, owing to his comparatively paler skin, Robert noticed the mutations in his hand right off the bat. He was not quite sure about the mutations and tried not to pay attention to them. However, during a sparring session with a classmate, Robert's traits became unavoidable, which led to Robert asking his father about these unusual things that were happening to him. Since puberty was not the answer for a genetic mutation in his hands, his father decided not to tell him anything, hoping Robert would let the thing go. Spoiler alert, Robert did not. Robert decided to search for answers, and that search led him to end up in the hands of the local shaman at the Apache Reservation. This shaman told Robert about his ancestors, and because we know that it is better to get information from the source itself, a ceremony followed, where Robert got to talk to his ancestors himself. The spirits told Robert that his purpose was to be a great warrior and lead the Indian people back to their glory. Then they proceeded to tell him that his name was not Robert Beresford, it was Robert Bearclaw, actually. With his newfound identity and goal, Robert started training with the local Navajo, Lakota Sioux, and Cheyenne tribes, who taught him more about his history and special power. At one point, he was arrested for doing something that we all support, attacking a man who raped a young Indian girl. While he was at the local sheriff's office, Cyberdata, this high-tech company in the Image Universe, got a whiff of his mutations. This led to them taking him in and replacing his hands with cybernetic enhancements. These enhancements became such an integral part of Robert that he could control the way these enhancements looked. He could transform them from his normal-looking hands to bear-like claws at will. However, along with these cybernetic enhancements, another thing Cyberdata gave him was a blank sheet for a mind. They brainwashed him and he became a special hazardous operation cyborg, aka shock agent. Eventually, he was freed from that life when Dr. Corbin removed his brainwashing. This led to him joining Cyberforce, where he went on to have many adventures and even work with Wolverine and Psylocke from the X-Men, along with the Justice League of America. Ripclaw meets Wolverine Cyberforce and X-Men crossed paths thanks to a fateful event that brought them together. This happened when Cyblade, aka Dominic Thibault, was captured by the Hand. They took Dominique into a safe house that was in Tokyo. Ripclaw went through hell and killed everyone in his path to save Dominique from being brainwashed by the Hand. After he killed everyone from the Hand, a sentinel appeared out of nowhere and seemingly killed Ripclaw. We only see a piece of his garment lying on the floor. Some time passed, and Logan found that piece of cloth with Psylocke while they tried to put two and two together. Thanks to Logan's nose, Psylocke and Logan both ended up under Tokyo, deep into the sewers, where they found two sentinels taking a nap, while Ripclaw and Cyblade, who were not dead, were trapped in these glass tubes with liquid. Logan broke both of the Cyberforce agents free. This led to all four of them introducing themselves to one another, and that brought up a bigger question. Why would the Sentinels capture Ripclaw and Cyblade? Because they were not mutants, only people with cybernetic enhancements. While they were pondering over this, the Sentinels woke up from their nap and decided to go back to their basic code, kill mutants on sight. Luckily, two men with claws and two ladies with energy blades are formidable opponents and the two Sentinels are taken down quite swiftly. Logan offers Ripclaw and Cyblade to come and stay at Professor X's school, but the Cyberforce members refuse, owing to their own personal affairs. This meeting was short and sweet, but the comic ends with a hopeful possibility of next time, where we might get to see X-Men and Cyberforce working together again. The entire Justice League struggled to defeat Ripclaw. In this comic book, we get to see Ripclaw being the villain. He has the God Tech, which allows him to resurrect people from the dead with the help of viral organic technology. This God Tech was given to Ripclaw by Karen, aka Velocity, who was his love interest. Karen thought that the God Tech would be able to help him, but it did not end up the way Karen originally planned. Ripclaw heard the song of creation, which made him mad, 
and now he had to be stuffed before his army of reanimated corpses with a bare semblance of life wreaked havoc everywhere. The reanimated corpses of the Russian space team killed a lot of students and police, which led to the Justice League and Cyberforce meeting each other. This meeting was quite something, as we got to watch the different dynamics between the two teams. We had Wonder Woman and Ballistic get off on the wrong foot, while Batman and Cyblade shared a rather flirtatious moment. Stryker and Superman, however, had very different approaches on how to deal with the undead corpses. While everything was happening, Manhunter realized what Karen was going through. Thanks to Manhunter, we get to take a look inside Karen's psyche and learn about the grief that she's been carrying with herself the entire time. After this, our heroes finally find out where Ripclaw had been hiding. Completely crazed and deranged, Ripclaw sat in the corner of the cave, talking about how his friends brought more food and how he needs to make more children, create more children who could go out there and claim his birthright, food. Understandably, this was not a conversation any sane man would have with himself, and that's when the Justice League and Cyberforce teamed up to take him down. However, this takedown was not very easy, because Ripclaw, after assimilating the god tech, was way more powerful. He sliced into Superman easily when Superman approached him. This did not end well. A huge fight ensued between Ripclaw and everybody else, trying to figure out which would be the best way to deal with him. Finally, Cyblade decided to cut the god tech out of Ripclaw's head because nobody else could figure out a way to stop him from doing his bidding. The army of organic technology kept rising and it was overwhelming. It was almost like they were fighting a losing battle. When the god tech was cut out of Ripclaw, Karen was happy because with the extracted god tech, she might have been able to bring Ripclaw back who had escaped during the explosion. However, while extracting the god tech, the tech tried to bind with Manhunter, essentially killing him. Karen was forced with a choice, either to save Ripclaw or to save Manhunter. As being a superhero means sacrificing a lot of things, Karen sacrificed the chance to fix her love by giving the god tech to Manhunter and bringing him back to life. Ripclaw enters in the darkness. Ripclaw has always been mentioned as the noble one, as the more righteous one. In the darkness series that follows the life of Jackie Estacado, we get to see Ripclaw after the picture and help Jackie with his character development. Let's find out how he does that. Jackie Estacado is the host for The Darkness, which is this entity that is the enemy of God. This entity always takes male hosts, and after Danny, Jackie's father, it takes Jackie in as his host. Using a dark power to do dark things is something Jackie has done all his life, but when he meets Batman, he decides that he will make some changes in his life, and that starts with him leaving the Mafia. While under witness protection, he visits a strip club where he ends up meeting with his beloved Jenny. However, once he leaves the bar, he ends up cornered by thugs who are ready to beat him up. Jackie then uses the power of darkness to scare them away. That is when Ripclaw enters the picture. Ripclaw has taken his role of being the true warrior very seriously, and the darkness and his powers are something that Ripclaw is not a fan of. Ripclaw and Jackie meet, and they duke it out. While exchanging blows, Ripclaw mentions how Jackie is doing a disservice to the power as old as time by yielding it in such a way. The only reason the two stop fighting is that it turns out Jenny is Robert's fiance, and Robert needs Jackie's help to stop the Legion of the Cherub hostile. The irony in using the power of darkness to stop the angels from doing bad things does not go unnoticed by Robert, who later mentions it to Jackie as well. In order to help Jackie go through years of training in a mere few hours, Robert uses astral projection and escapes the plane of reality with Jackie. Taking the young man with him, Robert and Jackie traverse to Lifescape, leaving their physical bodies in the care of Capri, Jackie's sister. At first, Lifescape that Ripclaw and Jackie enter is quite a mess, with overflowing coffee and every woman who Jackie has slept with. This obviously will not help Jackie yield the power of darkness any better. When Jackie is about to give up, Ripclaw points out the dead body of a man who happens to be Jackie's father. This leads to Jackie wanting to know what happened with his dad, and that is when Ripclaw rewinds back to the past in the lifescape, showing how good he is at controlling the lifescape plane. Here, we see Danny being killed right after the darkness leaves his body, because Jackie is born. While this is happening, Capri is going through a dilemma of whether to take the darkness for herself. In her monologue, we learn that everything she knows about herself and the darkness is all because of Ripclaw. We learn that Ripclaw is quite the knowledgeable man when it comes to ancient powers, and he has helped Capri yield her powers with ease. Coming back to our two boys, we see them go back to the day when Jackie and Capri were old. We watch Father Brendan, the one who was nice to Jackie in the orphanage he grew up in, take Capri with him. Jackie tries to stop him, but lets him go in the end. Having faith in whatever is going on around him, Ripclaw urges Jackie to face everything from where it began and pushes Jackie to meet with his dying mother. 
Jackie's mother asks him to do some good in her dying breath, which gives Jackie the much-needed emotional breakthrough. With his plan successful, Ripclaw gets out of the lifescape along with Jackie. While they come out, the Legion of Cherub hostile emerges and Jackie, for a second, hesitates to think of how he can even defeat them. That is when Ripclaw guides him with his vast knowledge of the universe. Ripclaw makes Jackie realize that, deep down, Jackie can do everything that needs to be done if he puts his mind to it because he has the darkness in him. Along with such vast power and his mother's wish to see him do some good, Jackie is able to seek deep inside him and summon an army of darklings which eventually defeat the Legion of Cherub Hostile. With this, we get to see Ripclaw helping out his fiancée's ex-lover in the most important character growth of his life. Is he better than Wolverine? When we look at the power of the two characters, Ripclaw and Wolverine, they are very similar. The powers of these two characters, along with their personalities, are extremely comparable. However, we get to see that Ripclaw excels in one aspect in comparison to Wolverine, that is, the spiritual aspect. Sylvestri definitely wrote Cyberforce as a bootleg X-Men, but then he leaned heavily into each character, especially Ripclaw. Instead of just focusing on his powers and everything, the focus is on his heritage a lot. As we have mentioned, Ripclaw is Native American, and he was essentially raised by a shaman at one point. It is no doubt that Ripclaw is extremely well-versed in spirituality and knows how to help people with their spiritual journeys as well. This is something we see repeatedly when we follow the stories with Ripclaw and we can see how his character is a better copy of Wolverine. When it comes to spirituality, Ripclaw is definitely a winner in my eyes. How powerful is Ripclaw? Ripclaw and Wolverine have comparable powers thanks to their cybernetic enhancements. We are talking about his cybernetic enhancements turning into claws at his will and also his amazing healing factor, which made putting in these enhancements a tough time for the cyber data people. However, he has other powers as well that we get to see come into play several times, namely astral projection and psychometry. Ripclaw has the power to astral project. He can escape the realm of reality and leave his body behind while his spirit traverses through lifescape. In the lifescape, he's able to deal with his innermost turmoils and thoughts. Not only can he go there alone, but he can also take others with him. He can effectively make big breakthroughs in other characters in less time because when he goes into the lifescape, he can control the time and almost rewind it to wherever he needs to be. We have seen him take Jackie Estacado into the realm of lifescape in the Darkness issues, which followed the Ripclaw arc. Wolverine is not a psychic. He cannot bring out memories from an inanimate object. We know that. But when it comes to Ripclaw, he can do this. This makes Ripclaw a very formidable opponent because he is able to take impressions from the objects present around him. We see this in play when he takes every impression on the ceremonial axe that had been used as a murder weapon. Ripclaw may not have a lot of scientific basis behind his powers, as no one can quite explain how his cybernetic enhancements work the way they do. But it is not a secret that in the Image universe, Ripclaw is definitely one of the strongest. Marvelous Verdict The world has seen a lot of ripoffs since X-Men was first published, but not everyone has been successful. Today, we chose to highlight one of the most interesting ripoffs of Wolverine. Ripclaw, with his spirituality and generally wise demeanor, definitely has the potential to steal people's hearts. With visuals similar to that of Kratos, Ripclaw is definitely a father figure we could use in our lives. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!